All right. This is going to be third times the charm. I am here with El Gallito, Roman Salazar. Hey, how you like that? Oh, man. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we saw each other physically, you were getting warmed up for a fight, and homie doesn't make it to the cage. <laughs> Okay, dude. And then just last week you were in Texas, mm -hmm. and and the 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 whole fight card got canceled, right? Oh, the whole card got canceled. Apparently, four uh, fights got pulled off because I guess I'm at fault somehow, some way, the gods of this. But um, the dude I was fighting was actually running unsanctioned MMA events, and the Texas Commission found out. And there was three dudes on the fucking card that all got suspended like that day. They got pulled. They were on that card in Texas. So the dude that my opponent was basically running unsanctioned fight club fights, I guess, fucking guy. So he got pulled plus three other fights. I left a card with, I mean, there's only eight fights on it. So I left it with four fights. I decided to cancel the whole thing. Fuck. Oh, wow, huh? Dude, man, that is that is shitty. I'm very, very sorry to hear that. Oh, dude, that shit was wild. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, their loss is our gain. Because over at Rough 41, you got to fight. Yeah, dude, I'm excited. I can't wait. I was just, honestly, man, just super excited. I mean, I feel bad for my dude, Ponce. Got COVID. He's been training hard. Look, he's doing the right stuff. But, you know. The way I look at it now, you know, I just got I just got a victim in front of me now, dude. I'm just salivating and ready to get into this cage, dude. I've been training with some monsters, doing some shit, and it's been a long time coming, dude. I can't wait. Well, and look, the last time that I saw you, you were fucking stacked, bro. You <laughs> were fucking going to murder somebody that night. So maybe it's probably a good thing that old boy didn't make it to the cage, right? Because you were looking phenomenal. <laughs> well, I think I look the same, dude. I think the, the the trip up to 145 has been real nice to me. Dude, I've been able to add some muscle to my body. It was a real seamless move, man. It's been crazy. Like, I mean, I've been in a fight camp with Zombie playing Dan Ige all camp long for him, giving him most of his rounds. So, basically, we ran camps alongside together. And it's like, what a blessing, man. Last time Zombie was here... He was so much stronger than me and bigger, man. And then, like, what a difference a year made of just lifting, getting bigger, and making myself a 45-pounder, dude. It's just, like, being able to push myself with dudes like that, I was I can't believe it, man. I go, I'm, a, I'm just a new dude. I'm a different type of monster right now. Like I said, the, the, the physique was fucking bar none. I mean, you don't get any more cut than that. And it wasn't, like, uh, you know, uh, just water weight. I mean, that was some fucking serious muscle. You know what I'm saying? Put that on. I got to give a big shout out to my uh, strength and conditioning coach, Coach Chad E.K. He's a wizard, man. He really is. Like, I was under the stigma, you know, he can't lift. You put too much weight on. It's going to be crazy. Like, I always walked around about 170, dude. It's crazy. Now, like, lifting with this guy, I put so much muscle on. I actually walk around lighter. I walk around like at 162 pounds now. He's, we're just joking about it the other day. He's like, dude, maybe you're just always fucking fat. I go, dude, I'm Mexican. Maybe I was, dude. I have no idea. I just used to get, like, skinny guy abs and stuff. Now I go, I didn't even know I could get these, dude. I'm all loaded all the time now, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, EK is a strong individual, man. Dude, it's crazy, man. And, like, he's obviously not just him, but, like, all his kids, his offspring, they're all monsters in the weight room as well, dude. It's nuts. Like, it's, like, unbelievable to me. Like, his son Chance has fought in the rough cage before. You know, the kid, like, walks around, he looks my size, and I'm like, dude, how's this kid so big looking? He'll step on a scale, and he only weighs, like, 152 pounds. I'm like, or usually in the 40s, to be honest. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. I guess, like, you know, muscle does weigh more than fat, but it's so much easier to draw water from, man. It really is, and it just makes the camp life so easy, and, like, it's the best, man. I'm not kidding. Whenever I got this call for Heward, like, my Santino called me, head coach called me, goes, dude, how fat did you get this week, you know, being off? Well, it turns out I never stopped training because I had a feeling that something might happen, dude. So I got on this. I jump on a scale, and I'm only 158 pounds. Dude. I'm like, 
dude, I'm so light right now with two weeks to go. Like, I mean, most people start fight week, you know, heavier than what I weigh right now. And it's crazy because I'm still big, dude. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, dope. that's dope man all right and what is the opponent you already mentioned it what does the opponent do well that we got to keep an eye on well i mean it's been so long since i've seen cody Heward in a cage obviously uh he fought one of my teammates back in the day um and one of my mentors frankie signs right so he actually uh it was um on the, that uh talking stick fields card um uh, not taking away anything from Heward. he did what he was supposed to do he landed a, a nice knee whenever he was supposed to and put frankie out i mean it's just one of those fights man i mean frankie I mean, so the the classic wrestler dips his head no matter what's going on if you talk to frankie he slipped on some stuff but regardless good timing for Heward. he's a tall guy you know just landed a perfect knee that was before frankie was actually my teammate man i just remember being there and seeing it because at the time i was kind of scouting like I'm going to end up fighting one of these two dudes one day. And weird, 11 years later, right? Here we go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I mean, he's tall. He's crafty. I know he's a pretty good grappler. You know, uh, I don't know if they still call him crazy legs, but they did for a while. He liked to throw up, all, you know, he'd get taken down. and Had a real active guard, if I remember him correctly. Of course, anybody that tall at 45 is going to have good arm bars, good triangles, going to be good. And, and honestly, just rangy and long, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm real curious to see what I'm going to – get myself into like i literally went in uh sparring today and i like grabbed every tall dude on our team and i say you know what i don't even know i haven't seen any footage of this guy training or doing anything and i don't want to train for cody heward of years ago i said so just do anything dude luckily for me i'm a fighter and i've been doing this for a long time so there's not much i haven't seen so it's not like if i mind my p's and q's and i'm like tight like i always am inside my shield i don't have to worry about shit he does and that's it 100 percent and then you know like i said they're the the card in, in texas you know that sucks right uh you go out there and, and do everything that you're supposed to do and the fight falls out to no fault of your own same thing that happened uh, a couple months removed from uh old boy i don't even want to say his name this guy but, uh, you know what i mean so you you've been at the fucking top yeah. You know what I mean? You've been in these big organizations, and this is actually a really big boost to this card that was already pretty fucking stacked. So, taking all of that into consideration, I mean, the whole whirlwind when all of this shit's going on in between, you you don't know if you're gonna fight. I mean, the the cards canceled, and, but you stayed ready. You like a professional. You did what you needed to do, and uh, an opportunity presented itself, and you're all over. 100% dude like I don't play this this is my life so this is what I do man like I'm a professional like I don't take time off in between camps I don't, I don't get out of shape I'm always in shape and it's cliche like you hear it you if you stay ready you're always ready you're always like it's my fucking life dude this is what I do I literally live at that gym so it makes it impossible for me to not be there I like, purposely put myself in a situation and never not be there so if I'm there I'm fucking working. It's just that simple, dude. That's my mentality to everything. I don't feel sorry for myself. I've had tremendous ups, tremendous downs in this game, dude. To me, it's just, all right, cool. Let's reset and on to the next one. Let's just get back to work, back to the drawing board. Like, I don't look at anything as a loss. I just look at it as more time to get better all the time, man. That's just how I look at this sport. At some point, you know, this is all going to be said and done. And I'm going to know that I put it all in there, dude. And that's all that matters. I'm happy with all of it. Well, and the crazy thing about your career, like just in general, is you're not afraid to take those scary fights. You know what I mean? Taking on a guy that nobody knows, you're willing to get in there and throw down with fuck anybody. Oh, dude, 100%. I live that, dude. Like, I, I'm i not kidding. Like, to me, that's what a fighter is, right? Like, I, and I did even before I got signed to the UFC, dude. I didn't take any easy fights. I wanted the hardest road there i really did and i'm still that way like i've been offered easy fights and i turned those fuckers flat like, honestly this my last opponent i would have never fought a tomato can bum like that idiot but he just had it coming and then he knows what was about to happen dude he was, uh, he was about to have to meet his maker at that point now he spends his time picking on my wife dude i can't believe it my wife's ready to shotgun this dude i I'm not kidding. Like, I have no time for that guy. I don't give him any clout. I don't respond to anything he ever says. He's just one of those guys that's just not worth my time or attention. But, I mean, 
I will say he dodged the ultimate bullet that day, dude. I was there to hurt that man. I'm not kidding. I was I was gonna I was gonna end his career poorly. This was not gonna be good for him. I can confirm. <laughs> I can confirm. That was the, like I said, physically the best I had ever seen you. And just there was something about the 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 mentality. Like you knew that a man was about to die. I'm telling you, dude, like I had nothing nice planned for that guy. And like I, I am not kidding. I was normally like fight dude, I'm a competitor. I just want to win. I hate losing. That guy, I am not kidding, dude. If I was an inch away from choking him out, I would have let him up just to beat him up more. I'm not kidding. Like that guy had it coming. I was gonna put him through some hurt for all the dumb shit he said. And he continues saying, I mean, but now like I just see him attacking everybody at this point. He's just a troll now, dude. So there's just no reason for anything like that, dude. But that being said, I will say, man, like I, I've been like on this closer mentality right now and like I'm really looking forward to fight Heward. I know he's tough. He's a tough kid. He's gonna be super scrappy. And I love that man. Like I love I love the thought of the unknown and showing up and just having to like learn on the fly. Obviously you could find anything about me anytime on YouTube. Google my name, you can see everything. He could he could uh he could find fights and he's gonna get ready for the Roman Salazar of the past, but just like him, I have no idea what he was doing. Guess what, dude? He has no idea what kind of fucking monster he's about to roll into. That's for sure. Well, and then there's also this thing called levels, right? Because this is a huge step up for him. This is, I mean, even worst case scenario, that's the way it was supposed to happen. You know what I mean? So for him, this is fucking awesome. But you know what I mean? It's like you, you, you have these fights that have to happen and you're the guy that steps in and takes them. That's it, man, and, and I'll always be that guy. That's the thing. Like, I, I will always be that guy. I Like, if you if you throw a fight that, that you know, gets my nipples hard about it and I get all horny to fight somebody, dude, I'm all about it, baby. I am not kidding, dude. I'm just a competitor. I, I, I'm not kidding. I'm that way, dude. That's why everybody says it. I mean, we're at the gym here, and they're like, of course you're fucking sparring again. I get home from Houston, and I'm like, Instead of coming home and saying, hey, family, I miss you guys for this day and a half while I was gone. I said, fuck, you, I still have time to go make sparring right now. Let's go do this. I what the fuck are you doing here? I go, fuck, dude, there's, round, there's shit to do today, dude. Let's go. I ain't going to sit here and cry about it. Let's just go. And That's just who I am, man. I, I love to scrap. I really do. And it's not like I'm just this dude that just wants to on-site everybody or anything. I just, It's just pushing myself and testing myself, man. I really, really, really love to feel that scariness inside of me and conquering those fears over and over, dude, nothing makes you feel better than that. 100%. I couldn't agree more. And back to the levels thing. I mean, is this kid about to learn that there is levels to this game? I mean, he's got no choice, man. He's going to learn. I mean, if he doesn't know, he's about to, he's about to find out. Right. And that's the thing. Like, even if he has the best performance of his life, which I'm hoping that's what, I mean, he looks like, I mean, he was getting ready good and everything. Like, there's just nowhere he could take me in this fight. There's nothing he could show me that I haven't seen. So he's going to have to have an answer for every situation. And that's the thing. And I'm telling you, dude, I'm a fucking, I'm a mousetrap when it comes to that. I don't just have like one set of tricks. There's, I'm not the best at anything. I'll tell you that much. But fuck, I'm good at all assets of this. And I mean real good at all assets of this game. So whether it's down in the jiu-jitsu department, if it's striking, whatever it is, wherever this fight takes place, I, I have answers. I know I do. And, you know, we're just going to see how good he is at answering them. And if he's not, he's he's, he's going to get finished. It's just that simple. 100%. And there's there's more life in, in like, the way that you're speaking. Now, the, the, the move up to 45, it seems to be playing a huge role in just life overall, right? I mean, go ahead and uh, just, uh, you know, expand on that a little bit. It just feels good. I just honestly, honestly, I was sitting here talking, like, with my coach about it. And he's just like, you know, honestly, you just fought your whole career at the wrong weight class. He goes, here's the thing. Like, he goes, you're not really a 45-er. You're probably a 140-pounder. But there is no 140 weight class. He goes, but guess what? I take you at 145 over 135 always, any day of the week. Because now you're strong and you're confident. And, and, you know, it took a lot of time. Like, it was crazy. I knew, like, I hated cutting at 35. It was the worst. You know, I'm not a small dude. Like I said, I walked at 70. And I would cut 
to 135, I'm not a mathematician, dude. That's 35 pounds. That shit's not nice for anybody. You know, it's just not nice. So, like, I would spend eight weeks in fat camp every time I fought, dude. Like, I mean, it, it was a nightmare. It was like, like, half of my camp, if not more than half, was like, how the fuck am I going to make 35? Where at 45, I don't think, I don't, dude, I don't, like, literally even have to jump on a scale until I'm two weeks out. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's see what I'm going to do. So all camp, all I could do is focus on getting better now. And, like, obviously, like, whenever the Fight Ready lab merger happened, so many of the dudes came over, it just, like, made me realize where I'm actually at. Like, in the, the nightmares of sparring partners I have now, like, dude, I'm a 1,000% more scared to spar at my gym on Tuesday and Friday than I am of any fight. Because here's what happens. I finish a motherfucker in a round. I choke him. He gets up mad trying to get revenge. And I still got five more rounds to go. Like, there, there's no easy way out of this shit, you know? Like, if I finish you or I choke him, catch him with something, we're done. On to the next one, you know? If, like, that's just how it goes. If I finish Hewitt in the gym, I got Henry Corrales sitting over here salivating, waiting to punch me in the head. And after him, I'm going to have Zombie. And after him, I'm going to have Frankie Signs. I'm just going to have this list of murders row. I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. That's way more scary. So that's where the real confidence came from. Obviously, like, I just look the devil in the eye every day now, man. And not just in sparring. I mean, like, dude, we have so many world-class grapplers now. Just in the wrestling room, in that sense, dude, like, they're, it's a constant competition no matter what. If we're in the weight room, I'm not going to quit before anybody, you know. Like, I'm going to keep going. We're, we're going to fucking go. So that elevated competition just kind of, like, put things into perspective for me. Like, for a while there, like... I was at a crossroads, like, do I still want to do this? Do I want to just be a trainer? What's going to happen? And right now, I'm, like, all in, man. Like, I was the fight-ready general manager. I was kind of moving on. I was like, you know what, dude? I still I still got some gas in the tank. I'm all in. I'm just a fighter right now. And I have clients I train, but everything else I do is just to get ready to fight, man. Like, I literally train six days a week, two to three times a day, all the time. That's all I do. Well, I mean... It's it seems like it's paying off, you know, the move, the the reduction at work. Right. Uh, every, all, you're making all the right moves. You're making all the right moves. And it's not like, you know, this is your final stand per se, but you're working towards getting back to where you were, to where you, you, you're supposed to. Be. Absolutely. And that that's you just hit it on the head right there. Like, I know how good I am. Everyone at this gym knows how good I am. And believe it or not, people around the world know how good I am. It's just like, there's times whenever I just show up and I w- that, that Roman wouldn't show up. And other times, that killer Roman would show up. Like, God damn, this guy's the one, you know? So it's just about being consistent. And and in reality, that just always depended on how my weight cut went, dude. Whenever I had bad, bad weight cuts, I had terrible performances. If I got it off and I made weight right and I bounced back great, at some of the best performances. I'm never going to have a bad weight cut at 145, so I know I'm going to be okay. And that's going to be – it's it, man. It's literally, to me, it's just where I'd rather be, man. I, I I would rather, like, again, give up some size and strength, but I have cardio for days, and I got a granite jaw at 145, dude, so we good. <laughs> 100%. Now, remind me, okay, you, you've taken short-notice uh, fights before, but the Bellator, was that one or two weeks? The outdoor fight was six days, not even a week. <laughs> there you go. So you're, you're, you're already a gangster, right? Because that wasn't just a Bellator fight. It was on the other side of the world. Yep. On six days notice in a main event in a promotion you had never fought for. Then let's do it. You ain't know how I am, dude. I'm telling you. I don't, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so you, everybody already knows that Gaito is a gangster. Right now, it feels like everybody's going to find out that you're a fucking savage on the 20th. That's it, dude. They're going to see it, man. Like, I mean, like I said, I like I know over at Baker Fit, like Baker's MMA, they're doing some good stuff over there. I love Glenn, dude. He's a good dude. I um, you know, have nothing but good things to say. Just a competitor. Right. But at the end of the day, this is business, dude. This is my job. And I take this seriously. And. I don't know what Cody was up to all these years, but I know what I've been doing. It's been this. So I'm going to go out there and make it happen. Like I said, dude, I'm expecting the best version of him, and I'm expecting a scary monster to show up. And I'm okay with that because I see that shit every day. 100%. Now, on the 20th, 
when Jeff Way raises your hand and says, Gallito is the winner. How are we going to celebrate with that post-fight victory meal? Man, dude, I'm awesome, dude. I'm telling you, I'm going to turn this right now, just so you know. I'm a sicko. Right now, I'm literally sitting here watching Food Network. Best thing I ever, this is all I do. I uh, no. ever ate, you know, this is, this is literally what I'm sitting here doing right here. But, you know, like, again, the weight cuts aren't as bad, so I don't sit there salivating as much. But what I've been craving more than anything, more than a meal, more than anything, is some Bosa donuts, dude. And I have not, because I've been in camp. I didn't go get it, dude. I just, and I want to be a disgusting pig. I want to eat a whole fucking dozen. I'm not kidding. Like, I'm sitting here. I was going to crush it. I don't want, like, and it happens to be Father's Day, by the way, fight day. So I'm like, dude, what a fucking awesome Father's Day gift. You couldn't give me anything better, right, as my daughter just ran by. But um, I am not kidding. Like, I just want dessert so bad right now. Like, sugar's the one thing I do cut out all the time. So, like, and that's just, sugar makes me feel like shit. So whenever I'm in camp and I'm doing things, I just don't feel good whenever I'm eating sugar. But after I get this W and I got Jeff Ray screaming out, Gaito, I'm going to go get me some donuts, man. And then we'll we'll reassess after that. <laughs> Maybe a trip up to 55? <laughs> uh, yeah, I knew. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to have an ab left on my body on Monday. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely respect that. And donuts... <laughs> Donuts are – so I was actually telling one of the guys at work this morning that I just wanted donuts. Dude. I just wanted donuts. There's nothing better. There yeah. really is nothing better than donuts. <laughs> now, I know the shop down here – I was just talking to Nixon earlier, and we were talking about donuts as well. And we have a shop down here called Amy's, and they got some extravagant donuts. Ah, oh, dude. Have you been Amy's? Oh, dude, I've never been Amy's. Like, but it sounds phenomenal to me. I, it feels like I gotta go to Amy's. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. They've got uh, uh, coffee donuts. They've got bacon donuts. They've got peanut butter donuts. They got maple yeah. donuts. They get Bro. it. They got it all at Amy's. I'm telling you, like three donuts will cost you almost twenty bucks. Oh, dude, worth it. Best twenty. Best best Jackson I'll spend in my life, dude. Yes, sir. <laughs> that, yeah, it's true. 100%. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Well, before I let you go, obviously, you know, I'm going to give you some time to thank whoever you'd like. But uh, do you have a message for your opponent? Nah, honestly, man, it's just please, please. I won't believe this is all real to at least punch you once in the face. It might still be doing. My luck right now, dude, like, like I got to get in. I, I, like, I don't know nothing, man. Just – Show up ready to fight, my dude. And I know, like, you're a competitor. You're there. You're game. You're there for a reason. You wouldn't have accepted this fight if you weren't there to make it happen. And let's just give these people a show. Live audience at Celebrity Theater. Dude, we're going to make some shit happen there. I can't wait. So my only message is just show up, bring your A game, because I know I am. That's for sure. Yeah, 100%. I'm all about that. Now, go ahead with your shout-outs, my guy. Honestly, man, everybody on the team um, at Fight Ready for just constantly helping me evolve, constantly, like, keeping me on point and doing everything the right way. Um, super huge shout-out to Coach Chad E.K. Because, again, he's the game changer in this, man. He, he he just he made me me, man. He made me this monster I am right now on top of all the skills I already had. He really did. Um, you know, and that's the whole coaching staff, obviously. And then, obviously – I've been working with uh, Jeff Wright as well a lot with Mitts and just getting my time and doing some things. I definitely got to thank my family because they put up with me during all these cuts and all these like little mood swings I'm going through and every fight's canceled and stuff. Got to got to thank them for being G's. My wife for keeping me on point. Always telling me to quit being a crybaby little bitch because I tend to do that sometimes. You know, I start crying about things about poor me, poor me. You know, and she reminds me like, hey, dude, this is part of the game. This is what's gonna happen. I get my day of crying, and then I get right back to work, man. It's really all it is. And, uh, you know, I got a real special human that's been helping me a lot with things recovery-wise. She's one of my clients. Her name is Lynn Shares. She had me do – she's helped me set up, like, my recovery booth with Norma Tech boots, IR lights, everything. Dude, she's she's phenomenal, man. She even got the Gaito shirts ready to go and everything. So, I mean, dude, like, she's – She's a real one, man. She's been working with me for uh, a little over a year now. Um, I've known her for a couple. She's been at the Fire Ready Gym, just 
really supports everybody that comes through. So I'm going to definitely uh, have to tag her on this and give her a listen. Lynn's a real one, that's for sure. And just to everyone else, man, like, we are got live MMA again. Come through. Come watch the show. Rough always throws good cards. Let's make it happen. And I am more than happy to be fighting in Arizona, baby. Absolutely. I cannot fucking wait. Because... Two of us. That I makes two of us. Right. Well, I'm sure you more than me. But I get to call the action. And that's probably the closest I want to get to you at 45, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe when you're in the sugar coma, uh, we can go. But yeah, we'll uh, make it happen. <laughs> outside of that, no, nah, I'm good. I, I, I prefer living. Thank you. <laughs> that's what's up, man. But, like I said, I want to thank you for coming on the show again. Look, the third time's the charm. This one has to happen. Make it happen, dude. I can't wait. It has to happen. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, just bump up to 85, and I'll jump in the cage with you. That's it, baby. We got to do something. I'm telling you right now, though, dude, it's going to happen. I know Heward's a, a G, too, dude. He's going to show up. He's going to make this shit work. We're going to show up. We're going to scrap. We're going to put on a show for people because at the end of the day, man, we're both not only fighters, but we're entertainers, and we're going to make this happen, dude. I can't wait. June 20th for Rough 41 over at the Celebrity Theater. It's going to be phenomenal. We'll see you in a couple weeks, baby. baby. (laughs) Let's go. See you in a couple.